Hello friends, I am Neeraj. I welcome you all to this whole new series on web development in Go. So uh, in this, uh, so in this, so I'm, what I am going to create is a very simple blog application with the CRUD functionality. So we will have functionality to, we will have the capability to list the blog, to read a specific blog post, and we can create a blog, we can edit a blog, and we can delete a blog. So these are the functionalities which uh, which uh, our blog application will have, and uh, I am going to have a separate front end and uh, back end application. So for the front end side, so I am going to use uh, React.js application, and uh, for the uh, our back end APIs, writing back end APIs. So I am going to uh, to use Go Fiber framework. So however, in Go, so we can have multiple we have multiple options actually to create web applications. So we can use the net HTTP package that is uh, that is part of a standard Go library, or we can use multiple uh, one of the um, multiple frameworks. So we have multiple choices like to name a few. So we have a uh, Jane very popular framework. We have Jane, Bigo, Iris, Echo, Fiber, and Fiber actually is a very lightweight and super fast actually. So this is why so I like uh, Go Fiber a lot and. Uh, uh, more precisely, like uh, if you were guys, if you guys coming from Node.js or more pre precisely Express, uh, if you have experience to uh, developing uh, Express-based application, so you will feel right at home. So I mean the overall architecture is very very similar. Okay, so let us now concentrate on writing the application. So this is uh, inside this blog directory. So we will have we will hold all the, the our applications. So first of all, so we will create a few directories. So we will create a client. So this client directory will hold our React.js applications, which we will create later later on. And we will also create one server directory. So this server directory, so we are going to create our backend API using Go Fiber. So we will cd into it and go ser cd server and. Uh, First of all, so we need to create uh, our application as module because we need to import some external packages. So we will initiate a command go mod in it and we will name it github.com bg and the name of our module is blog. So now we will open our VS code. So our VS code is open and we have the go.mod file and uh, we first of all so we need to create a file named server so we can name it anything so server.go and uh, this would be a part of package main cause this cause this server.go would be our entry point so it will have a function func main and uh, so and uh, this uh, func the, the, the this server dot go. So since we are going to use uh, Go Fiber, so we need to install it. So in order to install it, so this is very very simple actually. So we just simply need to copy this command and we will paste into terminal. So it will install the Go Fiber package into our this application this module. So we have the Godot mod file and uh, if we open our file, so we have all the dependencies needed right here. So now, so we, since we have installed our Go Fiber, so now we have to import it. So we will name it github.com slash Go Fiber Fiber and the version 2 is the latest one which we are going to use. So now, so like in Express, so we have uh, by convention, so we have the we use app variable. So likewise, so we will create a variable app. It would be an instance of fiber dot new. So this, uh, so the, uh, here we are saying that we are creating a new instance of our fiber, and we are assigning it into a variable app. And now, so we have to, uh, since our application, so we have created an instance of our application. So now we can start our application by uh, by this using this method, listen method. 
and here so all we have to provide the port on which we our application is going to listen very simple that's it so now if we run our program so using go run server dot go so here uh, so we are getting a very nice message that our server is running fine is running on this on uh, local host and port 8000 so now if we go to our this location local host port 8000 so actually there is i mean our application is running fine we are getting some response but uh, we are not getting something meaningful so why it, why this is so because we have to our application is running but we have to create some route so let us first create some route so that would this is, so this would be a get route and uh, it takes the first parameter we need to provide the path so we will uh, we will pass on the uh, i mean the starting point the landing point the starting point of our of our uh, of, of our application and the second parameter we need to provide a handler function so we will uh, we will go like this and uh, now we can return so actually the c is so this uh, variable c is basically of type fiber.context so using this uh, actually using context on this only so we can uh, i mean uh, access the request and response object and we can do many things so we we are going to see uh, in subsequent uh, sessions so very shortly so don't don't worry for now so just just concentrate that uh, this variable c so we need to return the response into this context and that context would be uh, would, would be returned back to the browser so that our so that the browser can understand it so using c so first of all very simply so let us try to return some string so we will pass on let's say uh, we will say hello hello world let us save it and every time so so when so when we do some change so we need to press press control c actually we need to restart our server so go run server dot go again and now if we refresh our page so we are getting this message hello world so our application is running fine congratulations so we have achieved the first milestone and now so actually with apis so usually the apis they listen on the they they understand they take on the request in the form of json and they return response in in the form of json because json is considered to be a very i mean uh, flexible flexible uh, flexible kind of things okay and uh, that has become a kind of industry standard to pass on data between uh, across the application so we can very simply return json as well so that is very very simple so like using send a string so we we returned a plain string so using c dot json so we can return a json json data and we have to return also and uh, this actually takes the for the uh, this this actually takes a map but uh, luckily so fiber already provides us a very handy way to create map using fiber dot map and here we can pass on the uh, proper data whatever we need to return so for example say we are returning a message and the message would be so welcome to my first blog application or let us say like, like, welcome to my first web application so this is the data we are returning and this is redundant so let us get rid of that and uh, now we will restart our server so server is started and uh, we are getting it correctly so like but uh, one of my friends few people i mean they we can also test our apis like this also but the preferred way to test our apis is via postman so few people i mean i got some messages that uh, they find it difficult to using postman or to test their apis so we can open our postman so uh, you can install it the postman on your machine as well so it is available on windows i mean windows macintosh mac or ubuntu so it is available for all of the specific oss 
So uh, for creating a new request, so click on this create and here we can select that we, we need to test our APIs using uh, HTTP request. So we can select this one and uh, here from this drop down so we can uh, provide the multiple I mean methods. So but for now, so we are going to test our get route and uh, we will uh, paste it here and uh, just let's uh, just, 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 just uh, click on this side this send button. So we are getting our, uh, I mean, uh, I mean JSON response, and our API is running perfectly fine, very very well. So our status is also 200. So very we are so 200 stands for, I mean, okay. So so there is nothing to so uh, there is no problem with the, our API. So then only for a success message, success. So we return usually 200. So there are multiple return uh, return codes, specific like 200, 201. 301, 500, 404, 500, 400, 401. So we will see that while we create uh, uh, other APIs. And uh, so this is how, so I mean, uh, we can uh, do it pretty, pretty well. And uh, if we, we can also check whatever the headers are where there. So headers also, I mean, our application is running fine and using Postman, we can test our APIs very, very easily and uh, very correctly. So that's all for this session. So we created our first route and in the subsequent uh, sections, so we will uh, create um, uh, our uh, different different endpoints. So whatever endpoints we will need and we will create our specific handlers. So for now, so uh, in this application, so however we can use uh, databases as per our choice, we can go with the uh, RDBMS or we can also go with NoSQL databases as well. So there is no problem with all uh, with that. So Go is having a nice and very handy, very, very flexible support for almost uh, every database systems. So, but for this application, so I, uh, I will use MySQL database as our database. And uh, uh, we will also use some other, uh, other packages for loading the uh, some uh, some some data from the environment as well. So, but that uh, we will see in subsequent sections. So, I hope you enjoyed the session. And if you if you have anything to see, any query, any doubt, so please do let me know, and I'll try my level best to answer them as soon as possible. So, till then, take care and happy coding.